I'm getting away. <laughs> Boy, getting caught, huh? <laughs> right in the middle of something. All right, everybody. We are stoked to be here today uh, for a variety of reasons. Today is Friday. It's 12 noon, and it's Fest to Alive. But the four of us in this room, we're thinking about, we are 10 episodes away from number 150. So if I'm to do my math, this is 140, that's 10 weeks away. Boy, before we hit that 150 mark, I'll be talking about some really cool stuff, and we're planning the rest of the year for Fest Live, and we're all really happy about it. But let's, in, let's get going with this one, because this is going to be a good one. Hey, over here, we have Big D on the board. Woo! Behind the camera, we, behind the camera, we have Chris, the unit, Cybert. <laughs> yep. See how I pronounce the ad in there? Okay. Online, or as us old dudes say, on the line, answering your questions is Brent Shively from the Build with Brent series. Make sure you check it out on YouTube. Over here, we have the world famous Min Min. Hey, and don't forget to tell us where you're from. Please. All right. Also, I know you're watching on YouTube right now because this is YouTube Live. Is that correct, Big D? It's also on Facebook, correct? Okay, but don't forget to also subscribe to our IG channel. That's IG stands for, I just found this out again. It's Instagram, okay. TikTok. It, oh, oh, that's right, we have a TikTok account now. Festo USA, don't we, huh? Woo! Hey, man, we're on the TikTok. And that's not T I C T O C, it's T I K T O K. Dude, you're coming up with the Hey, man, the social media is starting to wear on this young guy. Okay, also. I want to announce that right after this festival live, I'm getting on the road to go do some setup with my main man, Travis, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, at Oak Tree Supply. And I'm doing a demo day with Travis from 10 to 3. We're talking about all kinds of cool tools this year. But I also want to, uh, if somebody's watching for Fort Wayne right now, I have a request. Let me know what your favorite wing joint is in Fort Wayne. Chris is nodding his head because Seji loves wingies. Okay, so let me know and send me a, a, a message somehow like on Festool Sedge. Okay, so here we go. And I wanna go back four episodes. We talked about a tool that's brand new. It got released for sale this week, is that correct? Today's what, the 22nd or 23rd? 24th. 23rd. So on the 21st, we released it for sale in North America. It's the IG-130. And a lot has happened in that four weeks. Um, I've been working on slabs at home. I've been out and about at trade shows. And somebody asked me, can I use the IG-130 for this particular application. And the wows that we got at the trade show were unbelievable. And I had seen this when we released the RG-130 in Canada a few years ago. Uh, this is the brand new one. It's got it's so updated, it's ridiculous. And I said, okay, I'll do, a, I'll do a Festool Live on it because I think it was the lost application that some of you out there needed to see. Okay, so here we go. I got one of the best slabs in town right here. But what I want to do is how I used to attack a slab, all right, uh, for leveling. I, I didn't want to make a, a, this a hundred ways to, as I always say, in woodworking to skin the cat. I could take this to my buddy Ronnie and he could put it on his CNC and he could level it for me, right? Because there's some undulations in there. I'll show you how to check for those. And then I could make a uh, router jig to take my 2200 and go back and forth. And you can make those, you can buy those, okay? You can use hand planes to do it as well, all right? But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you one way I used to attack it when I didn't have a lot of undulations in it, and it was time consuming. So I'm gonna start over here because it's uh, my favorite sander. Well, let me, let's check the slab first. Okay, Chris, you're gonna be right here, okay? And I'm gonna get a straight edge. And if I feel this, it feels pretty flat this way. And it is, if I take my, my straight edge, you can see it's flat across here. And look, I continue to come here, look, it's flat. But where the undulations are, okay, look at this, look at the, there's humps here. And hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna run over here, because I should have done this earlier. I'm gonna grab a cis light, so we can see the light coming through. Chris, I hope I don't blind you. But I'm gonna come right over here, and hopefully, Big D, can you see the light? 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna mark <coughs> really quick where the highs are on this board going with the grain. So I know I have to I hit it right here. I know I have to hit it right here. Okay, so that's where I'll concentrate, but I wanna come over here and I know I got a decent size hump right here. So I'll mark my board right here. <coughs> so boy, I got some pretty daggone big peaks here. So I'm gonna just take my straight edge. I'm not gonna do the whole thing this, uh, this afternoon, but I'll just go through, cause I used to do this. I used to take my RO 150, and I'm not gonna do 80 grit, right? I wanna start with the, and I've taught you this over the years at Festool Live. This is the tool. Your paper is the tool. You gotta choose the right machine, right? So. I'm gonna start with the right tool for leveling this. I'm not gonna start with 80 because I really don't like the sand. I wanna remove 40 grit with 60 grit and then 80 grit, remove the 60 grit, but I wanna level it first. So this used to be my go-to tool for this. I'm gonna put my paper on here. It's like this, and here's a tip. I always see people struggling of lining up the holes and hopefully you can get this. Big D, can you get up over here? Okay, what I always do is I find one hole, I find a second hole, and it lays down perfect. So find two holes, and I always use the, the outer holes here to uh, set it up. So I'm gonna take my RO, hopefully I get it plugged in, it's plugged into the wall. All right, so I got 40 grit on there, and the right tool for this is not this, random orbit mode, okay? That's gonna take too long. What I do is I put it in Rotex, and you'll hear the pin go in, and this is where I'll concentrate. Okay? And you can see it as I drag it across, because I have the hard pad, okay? You can see the highs, this is the low, it's missing this, and this is your high, all right? So I would concentrate on here first, back and forth. Okay? Now can you do it that way? Yes. But it would take time, and time is money. I was doing this at home, and I came in here, and we were talking about the RG130, and before I went to that trade show, I did episode 136, and I was using this wheel here, okay? Not the, the diamond segmented ones here, or this one here for the AG130 for mastic or thin set, but this one, and these are little diamonds in here, and they're set in a metal uh, medium, but as I take things down, they wear down. And I, I started thinking about this, and I was removing paint with this wheel, remember? In uh, episode 136, and it did a fantastic job. So I thought about that, and I thought about this. This here, if you've ever, and I used to do this as well. I used to take a belt sander and bring it across like that. And you know belt sanders go really fast, but there was something else that a belt sander, I hated about them. Control, because they can get away from you, right? Okay, and you stand a, a chance to gouge with it. And you have that striation pattern. Well, with this, and this is that steel, hood that comes in here, okay, I can control the level, but what I like about this, okay, from three millimeters in depth cut to 10 millimeters, I set it about halfway. This is what I experimented with this week, and I lock it in here. The other thing that I don't care what dust extractor you put a belt sander to, okay, here in North America, is the dust extraction is not that great. Here we have Get, make sure we get the, a good look at this, everybody. We have, these are spring-loaded, these bristles here, so the dust is blocked as it goes out. Okay, now, I did this over here with the Rotex. I got a major hump right here and right here. Okay, I did a little yesterday, and I was getting into it, and I went, whoa, 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 time out, man. I wanna, I wanna really, I wanna show today's Fest Tool Live audience how this thing really cuts. So I synced it up and you can go to episode 136, how to sync it up with Bluetooth. I synced it up already, okay? 
I like this handle, the bail handle, because I can get in the right position. It's not awkward for me. And I, I don't have to put a lot of pressure on here. I'm just going to get this on. One of the things I will coach you on when you do this, <clears throat> uh, make sure you have a good grip on everything and make sure I always use a 36 millimeter because this is a monster in stock removal. And you'll see right now, Big D, you can get down on here as well. Whoopsie. Hang on a second. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm going to show you, not tell you, I'm going to show you, I have taken so much of that off already as I look at this. Okay, I got a little bit of work to do, but that came down a lot. So I'll come over here and get this hump. Okay, I just didn't, I didn't want to interfere with that. And what we come up with is these scratch patterns in here that are probably equal to like 16 to 24 grit. And now I can go to my Rotex once I have it leveled. And it's a process. Get it leveled first with an IG-130, then do your sanding in Rotex to what? Get away the striation marks, you know, the swirl patterns in there that the grit cuts. So if you think about it, if this is probably 16 as I'm looking at it, I'll jump to 40 right away. If I need 24 grit, remember last week, we don't have 24 in granite, but we have it in sapphire. It was lost in the catalog. So I, then I would go to 24 and then I jump to 40. Then I would go to 60. By the way, just removing scratch patterns goes really quick. But if I have to level, and a lot of woodworkers will start with a f 80 grit. And that right there, will you, I would be leveling this forever. It just takes it down super easy. Then I can come in here, I'll have 40 grit here. And then I can start. And you can see, with, even with 40 grit, those disappear really quick. And I don't know if we're getting this, okay? But that grain where, when we look at this piece right here, it's kind of gnarly, but the grain starts to really come out on this board. Okay, so, I will, oh, there's a, let's step over here, because I want to talk about this piece over here. Chris, watch all the wires and everything. Come on back here. This piece here, okay, is, I did this in about, 10 minutes, okay? Chris, come over here so you can see this. Look at the crown on this. Look how unbelievable that is, okay? Where I took that crown out very slightly. There's still a slight crown on that, and I would work this a little bit more, but look how aggressive that AG-130 is. And you may not have a big slab to take down or fair out or level, but boy, if you have something like this, now I'm not gonna turn it around because you remember this is the crown, what's on the other side? A cup. So I think if I ever took this all the way down, I'd end up with like a quarter inch piece. <laughs> okay, sometimes wood is not salvageable. And the other thing about this piece, I wanted to walk around is I took a draw knife to this this week, okay, to take or debark it in the ultimate tool for a live edge is the RO90. And maybe in an uh, upcoming episode, we can actually use an RO90 and work on a live edge for you so you can actually see what an amazing tool that is. So I just, I heard so much in the last four weeks about, hey, how does the RG130 work on wood? 
And I said, I talked to a few people here and I said, yeah, go for it. Do a festival live. I know it's a one application that we did for this live. I know it's going to be a short episode, but the reactions I got when we were out and about demonstrating this, people go, I never knew I could actually use that on wood. I thought it was just for concrete and removing thin set. Okay. The one thing I wanted you all to notice though, <clears throat> and I don't know if you could see it in the room because of the lighting. There is zero point zero dust in here floating around. And just down here is little or nothing dust from the chafe that I brought the wheel over here. This, I, don't, I, you, I can never say it's dust free, <laughs> but it's close to it. That RG130, and it's because of this right here. Not the steel uh, shroud. The steel shroud kept me from tipping it. Uh, it's, it. It gave me a wider surface to balance on. But these right here, these bristles are spring loaded and they actually float against those bumps that I was taking down with that. So hopefully that came across and everybody understood it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start calling out names. How's that everybody? Is that good? Uh, Minnie, you got something? Somebody asked Um, sorry, I'm late. So that effectively becomes a planer. <sighs> That's what somebody um, alluded to at the trade show I was at. I don't want to say it is a planer. Um, it's designed to remove paint, but you can actually use it to remove wood fiber. And it's very effective and it's virtually dust free doing it. So hopefully I asked that question. Yes, it could. Someone could say it's kind of like a planer, but it's not. <clears throat> what I would do with a piece like this, personally, is I would get it so one side is level because when it goes into a thickness planer, a thickness planer, not a hand plane, a thickness plane, I need that bottom flat because that rests on the, be on the bed of my planer and the rollers grab it. So if that wood is twisted like this, the rollers on top are gonna take it and twist it through. You will never get a level. You start with one level surface. A lot of people will use a jointer. I don't have a jointer at home this big. <laughs> Most people don't, <laughs> okay? But you level first one side and then you can throw it through the planer and get the right thickness all the way through and it'll level the top as well as long as the bottom is level. So in Saying that, if I have a piece that's wonky like this, it's crooked, I could take my highs off, get it level, then put it through a thickness planer. It's a process. And some people will have a joint to, to take that, as I call it, the wonkiness out of the wood, so I have a good reference surface, flat on one side, and then run it on the uh, narrow edge to go against a, a table saw. I use, for that narrow edge, I've always used a TS-55 for the last 15 years. It works fantastic. I get great glue lines. All right. Hopefully I answered that question for you. Okay. So here we go. Wow. That was fun. That was a really good question, by the way. We have Mike Martinez from Austin, Texas. We have Andrew from Toledo, Ohio. We have Doug from Zionsville. We have Malosh from Serbia. Is that, yes, yeah, Serbia, Belgrade. We have Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Aranzo from Mississauga, Ontario. Mehul from India. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We have Rock from, Rock. We have Russ from Chick Chester. Uh, Brian, St. John Moss from uh, the Bahamas. And absolutely, it's Bahama Brian. We have Rick from Sunny Blackpool. We have Yuzu from Paramaribo, Suriname. We have Paul, Cheryl, and Sam from Anthem, Arizona. We have Christopher from Malta. We have Cybern Coetzee, South Africa. We have Bermuda Steve. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> we have Jim from Pensacola, Florida. We have Spock Trishan. We have the Warped Woodsman. Woo! They're from Washington, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Or Oregon? Oregon, Portland. Portland, Oregon. Portland. We have, oh, here's Washington. We have Michael from Puyallup, Washington. Jason and Yana from Granite Falls, Washington. We, there it is. There he is. It's Dirk from Dayton. We have Liz and Eric from Birmingham, England. We have Mac from the Netherlands. Des from Harrogate, England. Har Harrogate, England, or Harrogate. We have Rob from South Devon, England. We have, there he is. It's Johnny O from Apco, New Jersey. We have Gary Furness. 
We have David from Israel. We have Jason from Fenton, Michigan. We have Nate from Washington, D.C. What's that? Woodcraft. Oh, Woodcraft. <laughs> it does, you see. It gets you. <coughs> it does. I need to quit initially. We have Nate from Washington, D.C., Woodcraft. We have Dana from Yalca, Washington. We have Rob from Columbia, Tennessee. We have Joe. That's our brother. From Akron, Ohio, we have Pocono Joe. That's a good one. I like that. Pocono. Pocono Joe. It almost sounds like a song. Pocono Joe. From Lakeville, Pennsylvania, we have Joey from Texas. You think he's the only one from Texas? A Joey from Texas? Mm. Possibly. Hey, Joey. Thanks for watching. We have Ant, my main man, Ant, from Fontana. Do you know what Fontana is, man? Mm -mm. California. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm going to be talking here. We have Soren from Denmark. We have Gail from Eden, New York. We have Rick from Tallahassee. We have Giev, Giev, Giev from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Brad from LaGrange. Paul from Reading, Berkshire, UK. Dave from Rio Rancho. Dan, my main man from Kingman, Arizona. He's got a great YouTube channel. Troy from Vancouver Island. Craig and Tyler from Virginia. Franklin Glass, they're my brothers. Okay, we have Gr Gr Gruffio. Oh, Minnie, what is this? It's real. It is. Okay, is that Gruffy O? Gruffro, that is no. Gruffio, Lian Fi Hangel, Ying, Norway, NFA, <laughs> North Wales. We have somebody from North Wales. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. I think I tried to say that before early on. We have Saxonburg, Pennsylvania. That's LJ. We have my buddy Roll, Wolf Vega, the Netherlands. We have Aquento from London, UK. We have Jeff from Claxburg, Maryland. Hey, Jeff, did you take the last train? Whatever. Oh, no, that's Claxville. That's Claxburg. Oh, it's going to be a long weekend. Alex from Moreland, Kansas. We know Alex. Larry from Burn, North Carolina. Kenneth from Oakland Park, Illinois. My main man, Oliver, from Southern California. How you doing? Oh, my God, look at California. Blake Weber, Novato, California. Jeff Covey, how's my main man? Woo! Okay, <coughs> Minnie, what are these? We have Will Van de Gieke from the Netherlands. Hey, we have Dave from Texas. But that's also Gwen. Do you guys know Gwen? I think Gwen, yes. she, no, 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 Gwen's originally from Tennessee, but she has no accent. She told me I had an accent once, whatever. Roby Juan Kenobi from Corneth, Texas. Chad Colton from South Whitley, Indiana. I hope I'm seeing you tomorrow at Oak Tree. Chris from Minneapolis. Dan from Whitestone, New York. Mike from Merced, California. Sam from Kingston, New York. So I always look at that, Sam from Kingston, New York. You know what I think of? Uh, Sam Kingston. No, Sam Kinnison. Kinnison. Mac from Anaheim, California. Joseph from Bellevue, Nebraska. Daniel from Bertwil, Bert, Bacretwil, Switzerland. Merlin, I love this. Merlin the Magician from Walla Walla, Washington. Wow. Man, I used to live in a river down by, I used to live in a van down by the river. Okay, we have Shannon from Golden Valley, Minnesota. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. Warren, you're with us a lot. Thank you. Jeff from Bloomington, Indiana. John from Ottawa, Ontario. Dale from Swadlinco, England. You're with us a lot. Thank you, Dale. Uh, Apo from Finland. Boy, you've been there since the beginning. Thank you. John from Thornville, Ohio. Warren from Caldwell, Idaho. Wilson from Bogota, Colombia. Wicked. Ian. Ian! It's Ian from East Yorkshire. How are you, Ian? Woo! Robin from Southern California. Todd from Wisconsin. Minnie from Indiana. Big D from Indiana. Chris the Unit from Indiana. Sedge from who, who knows where. <laughs> hey. West Coast. Brent, thank you for all your uh, help today online. We really appreciate it. Uh, everybody, I'm out of here. I'm heading up to Fort Wayne. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Uh, we're demoing from 10 to 3. Can't wait. Uh, come visit us, please. We're going to have a heck of a show. And I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. All right. It is, and this has been a short one, and I'm kind of, this is cool. Uh, 
this is usually when I start calling names. It is. It is. All right. So we got a good one planned next week. Stay tuned. It's next Friday at noon, I think. Hey, that's, is that, that, that's the 30th. It's July 4th weekend next weekend, isn't it? Um, July 4th is on a Tuesday, but yes. Uh, wicked. Okay. So everybody, we love you. I say that every time. I never want to stop saying that. Thank you for being there for us. We really appreciate it. Um, I can't believe it's episode 140. Do I say that every time? I do. I, I do. I apologize, but this is the best hour all week. Uh, we get the best crew, the five of us. We love it. Um, so have a great, safe weekend. We'll see you next Friday. I think this is a wrap, Big D. What do you think, man? Uh, yeah. It's a wrap.